Hi and welcome to my maths class. Today we are going to discuss solve for x. Before you start the section, you should be comfortable with all the rules of solving for x in grade 10. Please refer to our grade 10 summary video before attempting to continue. Please make sure that you are comfortable with all the concepts discussed in that video. In order to do the section, you must be comfortable with factorizing. You must also know linear equations. And quadratic equations. But last and not least, you need to know about the style of maths. Number one, it must be in alphabetical order wherever possible. So if I have y minus x, I'm going to try and make it minus x plus y. The second rule is we always want a plus before a minus. In that case, you have to factorize by taking out a negative, leaving me with x minus y. Using the same sum, if I take out a negative, I am left with x minus y. Thirdly, we have unknowns before knowns when there are more than one term. So instead of writing 2 minus x, I would rather write minus x plus 2. And then edit it accordingly for the signs, giving me x minus 2. But if I have one term, then I would not write x2, but rather 2x. Knowing this, we can now continue with fractions. When we are solving for x, you must see that your style is correct. Number two, you must factorize wherever possible before getting your LCD. Once you get your LCD, you must try and get all denominators the same. Once our denominators are the same, we can cancel the denominators. we would solve like a normal quadratic equation. Right, let us look at the following example. In grade 10, we had learned that if you have any expression that is more than two terms, it is safer to put it in brackets. This is more a safety feature so that you don't cancel unnecessary so that you can see that that, has actually, that is actually one term. Now, let us look at our style. Is everything in the question the correct style? If you look at minus x minus 1, that style is not correct in the sense that we don't want a minus to be first. We prefer for a plus to be first. So what we are going to do is we are going to take out a common negative, leaving us with x plus 1. When we have a fraction, the negative sign can be written at the bottom it can also be written on top or it can be left in the middle. Here, going back to the first expression, we have x minus 3 over... Now, once we've seen our style is correct, we start factorizing. x squared plus 3x plus 2 can definitely be factorized. It is a perfect trinomial, leaving us with x plus 2, x plus 1. Minus x squared minus 4. It's 5 over x minus 2, x plus 2. Difference of 2 squares. Equal, we have our 4 over minus x plus 1. Now, if you look at the denominators, you would see that your LCD is going to be x plus 2, x plus 1 and x minus 2. Had you not changed minus x minus 1, you would have ended up with a foot LCD, which becomes too high. The exponential power for x becomes too high and we can't solve those. Right, going back to our LCD. Our LCD is going to be x plus 2, x plus 1, 
x minus 2. Okay, now when we look at our LCD, we want every denominator to look exactly like our LCD. If you take the first one, x plus 2, x plus 1, what is missing? x minus 2 is missing. So I'm going to multiply it with x minus 2. And the rule is what you do on the top, you must do at the bottom. If I take the second expression, what is missing is x plus 1. So I'm going to multiply it with x plus 1. And what I do on top, mistake, what I do at the bottom, I must do on top. Then, I look at the last term. I have an x plus 1. What is missing is x plus 2, x minus 2. So let us rewrite this. I have x minus 2 into x minus 3 all over minus 5 x plus 1 all over x plus 2 x plus 1 <coughs> x minus 2. Now why can I write it under one else one denominator? Because they are the same. Once they're the same, I can write it under one denominator. Equal 4x plus 2, x minus 2, all over. Now look at the negative sign that we have here. This negative sign, it is safer for it to be on top. The reason being is because eventually your denominator falls. And we don't want to lose that sign. So we bring it on top. Remember in a fraction, if you have the sign on top, at the bottom or in front, it is the same thing. Over our LCD, which is x plus 1, x plus 2, x minus 2. Now because the LCDs are the same, we can now cancel the denominators. Leaving us with x minus 2 into x minus 3, minus 5 into x plus 1 is equal to minus 4 into x plus 2, x minus 2. You are now left with a quadratic equation. Quadratic equation says that you must make it equal to 0, but if there are any, if there are more than one term, in this expression there's 1, 2, three terms, then we're going to first get rid of all the brackets. So using your kitty cat of foil, I'm going to have x squared minus 5x plus 6. Here I'm going to use the rainbow minus 5x minus 5 is equal to minus 4 and first do your brackets before you bring the 4 in, giving us x squared minus 4, difference of two squares. Now I will bring my minus 4 in using the distributive law. This we can just bring down. Then I'm going to make it equal to 0. So I have x squared bringing my minus 4 over becomes positive 4x squared. Then I have minus 5x, minus 5x, which is minus 10x. Then we have our constants. 6 minus 5 is giving us plus 1. And we're bringing our 16 over, which gives me minus 16 equal to 0. So we now have 5x squared minus 10x minus 15 is equal to 0. If we take out a common 5, we're left with x squared minus 2x minus 3. When we factorize, we've got 5x 
minus 3 x plus 1 x plus 1 is equal to 0 once we factorized we can solve if you look at the equation a 5 or a constant does not affect the equation so it can just fall in other words if I divide by 5 on the left hand side and I divide by 5 on the right hand side I would still get 0 so the only part we concentrate on is the brackets we now have x minus 3 is equal to 0 and x plus 1 is equal to 0 giving us x is equal to 3 and x is equal to minus 1 thank you for watching